Hey everyone, it's Coach Matt Ellis over here at EliteThrowsCoaching.com and in today's video we are going to start going over the rules of a good conjugate system and this is all based on the last three videos that we did that you can find under this channel and at the EliteThrowsCoaching.com blog which go over a video that was done called The Critique of Westside by Chad Wesley Smith and Dr. Mike Isratel. So what we did in the previous videos, we outlined all the good parts about the West Side method, all the bad parts about the West Side method for raw power lifters and for track and field athletes. Then we turned those bad things into good things and ended up with a really good long list, some rules that you need to take into account as you are developing the conjugate system for your particular athletes. We're going to go through those today. We're going to list them all out. And as long as you follow these rules and try to implement implement these rules, you will have a really solid conjugate system in place. Okay, so in a typical conjugate program, in a typical conjugate system, we are going to be in the weight room four days a week. Now, as we said in the previous video, that probably is not a possibility for any track and field athlete, especially at the high school level in the entire country. You are in the throwing circles, you're on the track, you're on the high jump apron, you are on the long jump, triple jump runways you don't have time to be in the weight room four days a week. So what we are gonna do, the first rule is that you are only in the weight room two days a week. Now, both of these days in the weight room are going to be max effort days. So you're gonna have a max effort lower body day and a max effort upper body day. Now, the thing to keep in mind, we are talking about maximum effort. That does not always mean a one rep max. For that freshman guy that you have, doing 10 push-ups might be max effort. It might be a struggle for him to get 10 push-ups. For that senior guy that you have, 350 pound bench press for a one rep max or a 320 pound bench press for two reps, that's max effort for him. So this is all based around the level of your athletes. It's a max effort, not a one rep max. The third rule is that these max effort days need to be the farthest days away from your track meets. So to give you two examples, say for example, we've got our calendar here that goes from Saturday, uh, sorry, Sunday until Saturday, and we have a meet on Saturday. So if you have a meet on Saturday, you want your max effort days to be as far away from those meets before those meets as possible. So a few ways you can do it. You do your max effort lower body day on the Monday, and you do your max effort upper body day on the Wednesday. This gives two complete days of rest before your Saturday meet. The other way that you can do this, and this is 100% okay, and we have done it in here with many, many different athletes. My coaches do it, and I do it as well is that we do our max effort lower body day on Monday, and then we do our max effort upper body day on Tuesday. And what this allows for is you get Wednesday as a day of rest, and then we can do our more dy dynamic, our speed-based work on Thursday and Friday, and then have the whole weekend off. So you can try to play with that with your athletes as well. Another example, say you have a meet in the middle of the week. It's a random dual meet, happens here a lot during indoor track with, uh, with us here. Um, you have your max effort lower body day on the Monday, and then the day after the meet, you have your max effort upper body day. So you're not gonna do two days and then the meet. You're gonna do one day, a day off to do the meet, another max effort day, and then you might have three or four days off until your next meet. So as long as you are programming and plotting this on a calendar, you should be able to fit your max effort days, both of them, earlier on in the week without a whole lot of adjustment. So with that being said, that's really the first big rules. Those are sort of the overlying umbrella of all of the rest of the rules as they come into play. We're gonna put those rules up on the board so that you can see them. And again, as long as you follow these rules as closely as you can and make these work as much as you can around your schedule, you're gonna be in shape for developing a great conjugate program for your athletes. Okay, so right away, don't 
turn off the video, I know what you're thinking. This looks like a lot of stuff, but in reality, it's not a whole lot of stuff. A lot of this you are already doing. We're just going to streamline it and give you a little bit of a backbone and a little bit of a structure behind it. So these are the rules of conjugate system, the rules of your conjugate system as it pertains to max effort days. So the first rule is that you need to create three testing exercises anywhere depending on what you like these are going to be a little bit different but two to three testing exercises two at the minimum a lot of times this is a squat and a bench press or a variation of a squat like a squat down to a box or a bench press where it's just a touch and go bench press to see if you're getting stronger you need to make sure your athletes are getting stronger you need to have actual exercises that you know you can test them on throughout the season throughout the winter uh, throughout the summer and the fall to make sure they are actually getting stronger so select three testing exercises Okay, next rule is that you need to use heavier weight and you, you need to use as much effort as you can. So for your advanced athletes, these are your juniors and seniors that have been with you for a few years. They are good with using anywhere from a one rep to a five rep max with the big exercises. So these are your deadlift, bench press, and squat variations. So maybe it's a pause press, maybe it's a floor press, maybe it's a wide grip press, maybe it's a press with the feet up on the bench, maybe it's a squat down to a box, a free squat, a wide stance squat, a pause squat, some type of variation, but it's of the big movements. For your intermediate guys and girls, you're still going to be using those same big movements because these are probably your sophomores and juniors that have only been with you for maybe a year or so. They should be pretty good at using the exercises, pretty good at the movements, but more than likely, they still need higher repetition. They still need to practice the movement. They're not there yet where they could take a two rep max or a three rep max and really push themselves. You need to keep practicing the big movements. So we're going to use those big movements with one variation and we're just gonna do higher repetitions. For your beginners, they're gonna be doing higher repetitions of easier movements. We already mentioned the freshman that you have that might not be able to do 10 push-ups. So 10 push-ups for him is going to be max effort, even though he's not doing a two rep max on the bench press, or he's not doing a three rep max with a pause press. He is doing a max effort movement but it's a very safe, very basic, very fundamental movement that he needs to get better on. Next rule is that all these exercises are going to be full range of motion, okay? So we are not gonna be doing any accommodating resistance with bands and chains. We're not gonna be doing any boards with board presses. We're not gonna be squatting down to high boxes for your box squat, unless the only real example or the really uh, the only real exception would be if you had a beginner who was just horrible at squats you might start him squatting to a higher box and then move it lower over time but really we're going to use full range of motion at all times we're not going to do half push-ups we're going to get a chest all the way down to the ground we're not going to do dumbbell presses and only bring it halfway down to the chest we're not going to pull our deadlifts off of like three inch or six inch uh, blocks we're going to pull them off the ground we are always using full range of motion. The next rule is that we are never anywhere at or near 95% or more in season. So you're never going for a one rep max in season. You're never going to failure in season. If you have a guy who maybe on that day says, you know what, the last time that I did a pause squat six weeks ago, my pause squat was 315 and today I'm going to go for 325 and he's got that in his head. Well, he goes up there, he does 305 and he gets it, but it looks really, really horrible. And he's got it in his head. Hey, today I was going to go do 325. Might be a good opportunity for you as the coach to say, you know what? 325, probably not going to happen today. Let's back off a little bit. You don't want him to take that 325 and go, and go to failure. You don't want him to miss that rep. You always want him leaving confident. You want him feeling good, but you always want to be you know, nowhere over 95%. So if that kid was squatting, say 300 pounds and he wanted 315 and he gets 270 or so and it looks pretty tough, then you can cut him right there. It's totally okay. 
The next one is going to be that you need to change the exercises, but they should only be one variation away from that testing exercise. So again, if your tester is just a regular old squat, unrack the bar, take two steps back, squat below parallel, stand up. Regular old, just like in a powerlifting meet, regular old uh, one rep max squat. That's your tester. Then you could do the same exact exercise, but with a pause. Or you could do the same exact exercise, but down to a box. Or you could do the same exact exercise with a wider stance. Or the same exact exercise with a different bar. Just change one thing. Don't go different bar to a box, wide stance, with bands and chains, with a five second descent and a two second ascent. That's way too much, way too varied. It's not gonna translate into that movement that we're going to test. The next thing is that you need to make sure as you plan out that you work in phases. Summer, this is when you are in your hypertrophy stage. We are looking to add muscular size. We're looking to build muscle and get bigger. The fall, this is when we start to move away from the hypertrophy and get into your general strength. And then during the winter and spring seasons, if you have an indoor season, you are going to be in your peaking phase. And the last rule of max effort work is that you need to assign exercises based around the athlete's issues and injuries. So that javelin thrower that's got a banged up shoulder, probably not a good idea for him to squat with a bar on his back. So you might want to give him a different bar or have him do something like a front squat or a zercher squat that's not going to really wreck his shoulder. As long as you can stick to these rules, you are in really good shape on your max effort upper body and your max effort lower body days. Now we're gonna go into the repetition effort method. This is gonna be done during your accessory movements and this is where you are gonna be doing your higher repetition exercises to build up your variations that you're doing on your max effort days. All right, so let's talk about the repetition effort method. As we touched on in a few times in the previous videos, repetition effort method, this is where you're gonna be putting volume into your training, and your volume is normally done in your assistance movements. So, say for example, you have your advanced athlete. Your advanced athlete works up to a three rep, a very heavy three reps of some type of squat. Then afterwards, maybe this is where you take a lighter percentage of that and have him do sets of like five, uh, four to six, five to eight, something along those lines, okay? For your advanced athletes, they might do those back down sets. They may also move on, say on max effort um, lower body day, they might do their deadlifts. On max effort upper body day, they might do some type of an overhead press. So you need to find, again, variations for these assistance movements that are going to correct weakness. And you're gonna do them with lighter weight, higher repetitions. For your intermediates, their assistance movements are going to be movements that are easier to execute. So these are gonna be things like on your lower body day, it's gonna be goblet squats, uh, walking lunges, um, farmer's walks, you know, anything like that that is easier to execute, that's going to give them a lot of volume for their lower body and is going to build some muscle during the season. Things on your max effort upper body day might be something like a dumbbell bench press, high repetition push up, something along those lines. Again, there's variations. You could just, you could probably sit down and write. 100 to 200 different exercises. We're not gonna do that, we're gonna leave that up to you. And then for your beginners, your beginners are basically gonna be doing the same thing that the intermediate athletes are doing, but the weight is gonna be even lighter because they are brand new and the, rep the repetitions are gonna be a little bit higher. So how many repetitions are we talking? Well, for your advanced, your intermediate, and your beginner, advanced and intermediate, I would love to see something around that eight to 12 rep range. And for your beginners, I'd love to see something in the 10 to 15, maybe even up to 20 rep range. So something like a tricep press down with a band, maybe 20 or 25 reps. Your intermediate might be doing a tricep press down on a cable machine. He might get somewhere in that 12 rep range. And then your advance might be doing like a close grip bench press, but he only maybe get eight to 10 repetitions because the weight's a little bit heavier and the movement's a little bit trickier, okay? The last rule with repetition effort is that two to three exercises after their main movement and they're done. 
This should not be a marathon of, you know, we're going to stay in the gym for another hour. I'm going to do two tricep exercises, two more upper body exercises, an upper back exercise. Don't go crazy with this. Try to find different movements, try to find different exercises, try to find things that are gonna be fun, that the athletes can go through, get them done, get a little bit of a pump, feel good about themselves, build some muscle after that main movement is done. So this is sort of like the main movement is your main entree. These are like your side dishes, okay? You don't wanna have a million side dishes. You don't wanna have six different side dishes. You'll never be able to finish. Two or three side dishes after the main entree and we're done, okay? Those are the rules for repetition effort. Don't overcomplicate these. People will try to go crazy with this stuff. Pick a weight, pick an exercise, assign different exercises to your different levels of athletes and you're done. All right, so the last one we're gonna talk about is your dynamic effort, which we haven't talked a whole lot about, and we're gonna show you why in just a second. Okay, so the last part of conjugate training that we really haven't touched on too much in the previous couple of videos is gonna be the dynamic effort method. Now, the dynamic effort method is typically the other two days in the week that you are in the weight room, and you, these are dedicated sessions where you are moving a lighter percentage of weight as fast as you possibly can we're going to do things a little bit different. Again, we can't get in the weight room two days a week um, on top of the two max effort days we're already doing. It just doesn't happen. You saw we put up the calendar earlier. When are you going to do? You're going to go in, in like a Sunday afternoon and do, you just can't do that stuff. You're not going to have meats that are falling all over the place. They're falling in the middle. What are you going to do? So here's how we get it done. We're going to do all of our dynamic effort work outside. So you're going to do things like throwing, which we already do, it should be your practice every day is an explosive movement. You're gonna be practicing your throws. Your jumpers are gonna be practicing their jumps and your sprinters are gonna be practicing their sprints. That's very explosive, very dynamic, very velocity based. That's a good thing. We already do a lot of that, so keep doing it. We're also gonna be included things like bounding drills, you know, hurdle hops and longer jumps, repeat bounding movements. We're gonna implement med balls for our throwers. We're gonna use heavier and lighter shot puts for our throwers. We're gonna do things like running up and down the bleachers and things like that that's gonna build speed. There are a lot of things. You guys are tracking field coaches. I'm leaving it up to you. You probably have books and books and books on different exercises and games that you can do with your athletes that are training, but also a lot of fun that are gonna promote speed and explosion. These are dedicated, I cannot emphasize that enough, dedicated explosive sessions out at the track. Do not forget about these because what always happens when I talk to coaches and I say, oh, what do you guys do like for med ball work? What do you do with your throwers, you know, for things like hurdle hops or bounding? And they go, oh, we only do those if we have time or, oh, we haven't done those in weeks because we've been so busy. No, these are dedicated sessions. You cannot forget these. Put these in, plug these in. Just like your athletes walk to the weight room and lift, they need to walk into your field house or wherever it might be and get out the med balls. It's part of their training, don't forget it. Remember, we're not using bands or chains, no accommodating resistance. And with your dynamic effort days, we're not doing it because we're not in the weight room. We already told you that. There's no joint stress. There's nothing like that that's gonna be happening from using bands that are too heavy. Kids goofing off trying to put a bunch of bands on it and wrecking their elbows. Keep the session spread out if you have the time. If you don't have the time, you can do a one day combo where you might be do something like, you know, a bounding exercise and a med ball exercise or two bounding exercises, a med ball exercise and using a lightweight shot put. So you can mix up the upper and lower body days, but only if you don't have the time. If it's a crazy week, school vacation, two track meets, you're making stuff up, then just combine them into one day. But again, still don't forget to do it. Change up the exercises every so often, just like you do on your max effort days. So change up the type of med ball throw that you do, change up the distance or the amount of sprints that you do, the amount of bounding that you do, the height of the hurdles, switch it up, keep it fun, keep it interesting for your athletes. Um, but you've got to keep this somewhat specific. That's sort of the caveat. Just like in the weight room, you don't want to have a million different variations, 
you don't want to have that either. So if you have your med ball throws, you have a two-hand push against the wall, a one-hand push against the wall with their throwing arm, a one-hand push against the wall with the opposite arm, maybe a jump and a two-hand push, maybe a squat and a two-hand push up in the air, squat and a one-hand push in the air, squat with the other opposite hand push in the air. You don't want to do something like, you know, pick up the med ball, slam it on the ground eight times, spin around in a circle three times, throw it overhead backwards, because that really doesn't translate into what they do. Uh, maybe for hammer it does, but it doesn't really translate that much into what you do as shot put disc or javelin. You want things that are going to at least try to translate over. Don't get crazy. Don't try to like, just for the sake of having fun, pick out these goofy exercises, okay? And you're going to use these during every phase of the game, okay? So during the summer, during the fall, you are going to have your dy dynamic effort days. Now, for your advanced guys, maybe they can go in the weight room during the summer because they have the time. Maybe they can go in the weight room during the fall because they have the time. But really, during the season when we're in our peaking phase, we don't want to be in the weight room doing this. We don't have the time most of the time. So we're going to be outside at the circles. And everyone, these are the rules. Again, go back and look through it. This is not a whole heck of a lot of stuff. If you can try to follow these, write these down, okay? Follow these, pause the video, whatever you got to do. As long as you're checking off these boxes and you're sticking to that max effort lower, max effort upper, dynamic lower, lower dynamic upper, we're, we're going to be in great shape. Your kids are going to be getting stronger. They're going to be getting faster. They're going to be running faster, throwing farther, jumping higher, jumping farther. It's all going to be good as long as you follow these rules. Don't feel like you need to try to create your own system. Don't try like you need to get cute with your athletes. Don't bother. Follow the rules that are here. It works. It's been proven for decades. We've used it in here for the better part of eight years. And it is a fantastic way of working around injuries, getting your athletes strong, and getting them ready for the right time of year for the end of their season and the big championship meets. Try it out. Write down all these rules. You'll see it's a lot easier than you think. Hit me up with any questions and make sure to check out EliteThrowsCoaching.com for the blog post that goes along with this video.